All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Allison. I'm going to be going through the script for the manual that um, which I've created, which is called Visualizing Mass Spectrometry Proteomics Data in R. Um, so this manual will demonstrate how to use the MS Stats package to format um, and process your mass spec data, and then how to visualize it using ggplot and also using the process data plots, which is part of the MS stats function or um, package. So just a little bit of background. Proteomics is the study of the structure and function of protein uh, made by an organism. So mass spectrometry is often used to measure uh, proteomics data because um, the mass spectrometer can measure up to tens of thousands, sometimes even more proteins um, in a sample. And it's also very accurate. Um, the mass spectrometer uses the mass over charge ratio to um, calculate the mass of a compound, which has been detected by the mass spectrometer. Um, in this case, the program Skyline, which creates the output file which we are using in this tutorial uses the m over z charge um, value to <clears throat> assign each ion a peptide sequence and that's how we measure the um, presence of the protein and skyline also calculates the peak area um, of the chromatogram which is created by the mass spectrometer um, for each of these ions or peptides and the peak area is how we measure the intensity or the quantity of the protein in the sample. So um, the script that I'm going through today is available through this github link. Um, at this github link is also a zip file which you can download and which contains these two um, data files. So the skyline input file and the annotation file. Um, you can load these two files. I've already done some of this because it does take a while because the annotation or the input file is very large. So we can view what the raw data looks like. Um, we see that there's the protein name, the peptide sequence. Um, this modification may be part of the experiment. We have the precursor charge, the M over Z value and there's no isotope labeling or anything the condition so um, this is a experiment that has four different conditions and then we have a file name this peak area or area column is the peak area and is how we measure the protein intensity this truncated column i'm going to talk about in a little bit so this is kind of what our um, raw data looks like and then the annotation file is just created by the researcher you input the name of the file of the run and assign it the condition in the replicate so that we can now process and format the data using these two files. So this is what we will use to format our data so that MS Stats can actually read it. Um, MS Stats recognizes Skyline um, formatting and so we can use this function here. We have our raw data, our annotated data. And then this uh, feature, remove fe with one feature, true uh, refers to the truncated <clears throat> column, which we saw earlier. So Skyline makes an estimate as to what the peak might be if it's unclear. And it may be, the peak may be unclear due to noise and it will label that as truncated. And we don't wanna measure those peaks because we often wouldn't call them as real anyway. So now that we've formatted our data, we can move on. And this is our data processing uh, function. So we have our Skyline process data. We're gonna to transform to log two for the intensities. We're going to normalize using equalized means. So this uh, equalizes the me medians, excuse me, equalize the medians um, across all conditions and allows us to assume that all conditions have the same median. Um, this TPM is a summary method um, and requires this argument. Skyline requires that we impute uh, zero 
and the max quantile is this default. So I've already run this. It does take a while. Um, it takes like three minutes if you're going to run it on your own. Um, so now we have process data. Um, and if you look at the quant data, the quantification data that we've just processed, you can see it here. It looks like an object. It doesn't really look like a data set that we're used to seeing. So we need to extract the data that we want to measure from the object. So this is what this line is doing here. So I'm going to run this line. This takes the protein level data from the quant data object and puts it into a variable. We're just going to take a look at what that looks like. So we have the protein name, the log intensity of each protein, and then the conditions and um, the some other um, information that isn't very useful to us right now. Um, so we are going to move on to plotting this data. Uh, the issue is that our protein names are not um, numbers, they're not integers, they're um, factors. So we need to change that because the plot that we are going to be doing is modeled after a Manhattan plot. A Manhattan plot is where the chromosome is on the x-axis, so it may be 1 to uh, 26 chromosomes, and each SNP is plotted on the y-axis above the chromosome. So that SNP corresponds to that chromosome that it's under or above. And the P, uh, the log P value for that SNP is on the y-axis. So I took that idea and tried to make a visualization um, in R that was kind of modeled after that because this data set is so large. So we do need to change all of the protein names to numbers. We're going to do that now. And now we're going to put these values into our data set as a new column. And we're going to see what that looks like. That looks good. Every unique protein has its own number. And we're going to make sure that that goes all the way through at the data set. So now we can create our plot. So I wanted to save it as a PNG, and we're going to run this plot. And while it's doing that, I'm going to talk about what it should look like and why. <laughs> so we're using our protein level data. Our protein um, numbers are on the x-axis, and our protein intensities are on the y-axis. This allows us to create some randomness with the plots so that we can see um, more individual plots because a lot of them are on top of each other. Um, the dots, not the plots. And this allows us to create both vertical lines between for each of the proteins. So you know if it's connect the dots are connected by a line, they correspond to the same protein. This blue line is the mean of the log intensity. So we're just going to get an idea of what our distribution looks like. That looks right, almost 25. Um, and then, you know, almost equal on either sides of the mean. Just get an idea. Now we can create these process plots. I'm not going to go through and run them now. Um, I'm just going to talk about them a little bit because they take a while. But we're going to create a QC plot, a condition plot, and a profile plot. Um, you can automatically output your plots using just by putting in the directory, and the f this function does that. So we'll just take a look at what our plots look like. This is our QC plot. This, um, which shows the equalized mean, shows that our normalization worked. This is our condition plot. So I chose just this protein to look at. Looks like the um, expression of this protein is the same throughout all the conditions. And this is our profile plot, which shows the mean across all the runs. So we want to make sure that our mass spectrometer ran properly for every single uh, run that it did, which doesn't always happen. But it looks like it happened in this case. It looks like all our mass spec runs are good, and we can get a summary of our runs here. So these are the plots that we are able to make um, using MS stats and using ggplot. Um, 
yeah, thank you. And let me know if you have any questions. My email is in my uh, manual.